Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the last video, we have discussed about the polar plots of standard transfer function. A pole introduces a phase of minus 90 degree when the pole is at the origin that you can see from this transfer function. And if we have a zero at the origin, that introduces a pole that introduces the phase of plus 90 degree. And if we have the pole at the real axis, then the phase changes gradually starting from 0 degree from here the phase at the very high frequency becomes minus 90 degree right so a pole at the real axis introduces the phase of minus 90 degree at the high frequency and at low frequencies this is of 0 degree when the frequency is approaching to 0 and as the frequency is increased, the phase changes and finally becomes minus 90 degree. And the pole at the real axis initially introduces the zero phase at low frequencies. And as the frequency increases, the phase increases. Now let's look at a quadratic pole. We discussed the polar plot of a transfer function which consists of two complex conjugate pair of the poles. So the generic standard, uh, the generic um, second order transfer function is given by this equation and this can be written like that if we divide numerator and the denominator by the natural frequency omega n. So we will get this transfer function. Now to get the sinusoidal transfer function we will have to replace this s with j omega. So if s is considered as j omega so this transfer function can be written like this. So here you can see that S is replaced with um, J omega and this S is replaced with J omega. So we can write this transfer function like this. And now if you simplify this one, you can write in terms of the real and the imaginary part. So this and this will make the real part 1 minus omega square minus uh, omega square divided by omega n square this is the real part of this denominator and the imaginary part will be defined by this equation okay so in order to get real and the imaginary part we can rationalize this one so we will multiply it with the complex conjugate it is 1 minus omega square by omega n square minus j into 2 zeta into omega by omega n. So if we rationalize this one and we separate the real and the imaginary part, the real part will be given by this equation and the imaginary part will be given by this equation. Here you can see it is the function of the frequency omega. And similarly, your real part is the function of the frequency. So your imaginary part is also the function of the frequency omega. Now, if we look at the magnitude, the magnitude can be obtained by taking the square of this part plus the square of this part, and then the under root, you will get the magnitude of this part. So the magnitude of this transfer function is given by this equation. Here you can see the magnitude of the numerator is 1, and of the denominator is this one: 1 minus omega by omega and uh, square and the whole square of that one plus 2 zeta omega uh, by omega n square and to calculate the phase what you will have to do you will have to take the tangent inverse of imaginary part that is coming from here this is the imaginary part and um, this one is the real part so the phase of the numerator is 0 minus the phase of this denominator tangent inverse of the a real part of the denominator divided by the real part of that one so that you can see over here so the phase of this transfer function will be given by this equation so this is the magnitude and this is the phase for a transfer function introducing two quadratic poles the complex conjugate pair of the poles so now if the omega is approaching to zero then the magnitude will be approaching to one because this part will become zero and um, when omega will be approaching uh, will be approaching to zero so this part will be, will also be zero so one by one the magnitude will be one and from this part uh, this will be zero so tangent inverse of zero will be zero degree so when the 
omega will be approaching to 0 your transfer function magnitude will be approaching to 1 and phase will be 0 but as the omega is approaching to infinity so if we replace this omega by infinity over here and we simplify so the magnitude will be approaching to 0 and its phase will be approaching to minus 180 degree so the polar plot of the quadratic pole pair is um, the present is given over here that if we sketch the variation in the magnitude with the phase so its polar plot will be somewhat like this the shape of the polar plot depends upon the damping factor so if we have the large zeta so the polar plot will be like this and if the damping is reduced the polar plot for this second order transfer function for the quadratic poles you will be getting these curves so this is the polar plot of this transfer function over the x-axis we have the real part of our sinusoidal transfer function and over the imaginary axis we have the imaginary part of our transfer function right so its phase is going to change quadratic pole the initial phase will be zero when the omega will be equal to zero as the frequency is increased so it's finally the phase is going to become minus 180 degree that you can observe from here at low frequencies it is zero the phase over here because this will be the um, magnitude and then the magnitude will be changing like this as the frequency will be changing so its phase will be changing similarly if i take this one at this uh, frequency this is the phase and this is the magnitude and this is the phase at some other frequency that is somewhere over here this is the magnitude and its phase will be this one so if you keep on increasing the frequency you can have different points at this one and your phase will be increasing and finally this phase will become 180 degree when this frequency will be approaching to infinity so the magnitude will be in approaching to zero but at the angle of minus 180 degree so there are two poles one pole introduces minus 190 degree and the other pole introduces minus 180 degree so these two poles in combined form will introduce finally the phase of 180 degree negative 180 degree right so now if we look at uh, this equation when this equation will give you the zero real part when this will become zero when this part becomes equal to zero so your real part will become equal to zero so from this i can write that one minus omega by omega square by omega n square is equal to zero so from here i can get that uh, this will be equal to zero if omega is equal to omega n so if our frequency becomes equal to the natural frequency our real part is going to become zero only the um, imaginary part is going to um, exist so what that imaginary part will be as this omega by omega n this will be equal to one so this part is going to become zero right and um, what about this part omega by omega and this will become one so this will be left with only two zeta so two zeta square and from here we will also be left with two zeta so two zeta by two zeta square will be equal to one by two zeta so our sinusoidal transfer function can be written like that when your frequency is equal to omega n at natural frequency the real part is zero and the imaginary part is one by two z and um, this is negative that you can observe from here so this is the transfer function when the frequency is equal to omega n and that you can see over here that when the frequency is equal to omega n you have this one your real part is equal to zero at this point and your imaginary part is equal to minus 1 by 2 zeta so from this diagram you can look at the polar plot of the function with the quadratic poles so at this point you will be having the real part 0 x will be 0 and y will be equal to 1 by 2 zeta so as the zeta will change so it's crossover at the negative imagine, uh, imaginary axis will be at frequency 
equal to omega n so this magnitude at this uh, frequency this one this magnitude will be given by this one 1 by 2 zeta because at this point we have seen the imaginary part is given as 1 by 2 zeta so our transfer function is reduced to this one so its magnitude is given by this equation so the shape of this polar plot depends upon the zeta factor the damping factor okay now let's look at this example let's suppose that we have the transfer function that is given by this equation right so first of all let's write down the sinusoidal transfer function by replacing s with j omega so we will get this transfer function so this is in terms of now j omega and if we simplify this one in terms of the real and the imaginary part we can write it like this so the magnitude of this transfer function can be written like that the magnitude of the numerator is 1 and of the denominator will be obtained by taking the square of the real part plus the square of the imaginary part and then taking the under root so this is the magnitude of this transfer function so what will be the phase the phase of this part is 0 minus the phase of this part so this is obtained by dividing the imaginary part with the real part so the imaginary part is 0.8 omega and the real part is 1 minus omega square so this is the phase of this one and definitely it will be with negative sign okay so now uh, let's uh, look at the instructions written in the MATLAB to sketch the polar plot or the Nyquist plot of this one. So numerator is equal to 1. So it, in the MATLAB it will be defined like this. And the denominator has this coefficient 1.8 and 1. So we have the array. Let's suppose equal to 10. And uh, then we can use the command Nyquist to sketch the uh, polar plot. In the Nyquist plot the frequency is considered from minus infinity to the infinity. But in polar plots, we take the frequency from 0 to the infinity. So the half part of this Nyquist plot will be our polar plot. And this instruction will just turn on the grid. So if we execute this one in the MATLAB, you are going to get, uh, you are going to get this polar plot. So when the omega equal to 0, your polar plot will be at this point. And when you will be increasing the omega, so it will take this shape. And finally, at the angle of minus 180 degree, it will reach to 0 when the frequency is approaching to infinity so at infinite magnitude it's uh, infinite frequency its magnitude is zero so this is the uh, polar plot when the omega is positive and it is increasing like that but if we have the negative uh, frequency starting from infinity coming uh, all of considering the negative infinity uh, frequencies over here so when the frequency will be approaching to zero we will be traversing this path so here the frequency is varied from minus infinity to zero but over here in this case the frequency is uh, varied from zero to the um, infinity right so uh, the half portion will be indicating the uh, polar plot so as we have already um, seen that that uh, at um, um, this crossing when our polar plot is crossing the imaginary axis the real part is zero so uh, our transfer function is given by this equation so its magnitude is 1 by 2 z so the zeta can be obtained from uh, this transfer function because this part is 2 zeta omega n so 2 zeta omega n is 0 0.8 and what about, what about omega n omega n is 1 so 2 zeta is equal to 0 0.8 so from here you can find out the zeta the zeta will be equal to 0 0.4 so considering this zeta and uh, taking it over here so you will get this magnitude equal to 1.25 so that you can observe from this graph that when this is equal to minus 1.25 you have the crossing of the polar plot at the imaginary axis so this is the imaginary axis similarly when you will be considering the negative frequency the crossing will be at 1.25 so this is the polar plot of the transfer function with two quadratic poles complex conjugate pair of each other now how to find out the resonant frequency and the peak of that one we have already seen that uh, the resonant frequency is one at which the magnitude of the transfer function becomes maximum so if you are going to sketch the polar plot let's suppose this is the polar plot so the point the frequency at which its magnitude is maximum 
the magnitude is basically this thing so uh, when the magnitude is going to become maximum that frequency is called the resonant frequency and the magnitude of your transfer function at that frequency is called the resonant peak so g of j omega becomes maximum at the frequency equal to the resonant frequency so that can be obtained from the polar plot and what will be that point the frequency at which the magnitude becomes maximum right so that frequency is called the resonant frequency so here you can see the polar plot when the omega is equal to zero it will be starting like this and at omega um, as the omega is approaching to infinity this will become zero from the angle minus one um, minus 180 degree so it will be entering into the origin from this one so there are two poles one pole introduces minus 90 degree and the second pole also introduces minus 90 degree so total angle that will be contributed will be equal to minus 180 degree and that you can observe from this graph now suppose we have the quadratic zero so the generic transfer function for the quadratic zero is given by this equation 1 plus 2 zeta s plus s square so replacing s with j omega you will get the sinusoidal transfer function that is given by this equation so the magnitude of this can be written like that 1 minus omega square by omega n square the whole square of that one so from where you are going to get this term this is obtained from here right and the imaginary part is this one because 2 zeta omega by omega n is with this j so this is the imaginary part so real part square plus the imaginary part square you will get the magnitude and its phase will be equal to tangent inverse of uh, imaginary part divided by the real part so this is the phase so as the polar plot is the uh, plot when your frequency is varied from 0 to infinity so when the omega is approaching to 0 your transfer function g of j omega can be written like that 1 with angle 0 so when this frequency will be 0 this part will become 0 this part will become 0 and you are only left with 1 and its phase because this part is going to become 0 so its phase will be approaching to 0 so that you can see over here so when your frequency is approaching to 0 you have this magnitude and the phase and if your frequency is approaching to the infinity so your magnitude will be approaching to the uh, infinity so for that um, I can write it like that the magnitude is infinity and finally the angle will be equal to minus 180 degree that you can evaluate with the help of this expression so the polar plot for the quadratic zero is shown over here so when your frequency is zero you are at this point so as your frequency will be increasing your magnitude will be increasing so at very high frequency the magnitude will be infinite and the phase will be approaching to 180 degree right so this is the polar plot and this will be crossing the imaginary axis when the real part is going to become zero so from here i can say this will become zero when omega is equal to omega n so when the frequency becomes equal to the natural frequency there will be the um, crossover at the positive imaginary axis in the case of the quadratic zero so this is the polar plot of the uh, quadratic zero so if i summarize this video we have discussed the polar plot of the quadratic poles and the quadratic zeros so that's all from this video thank you very much